Have you ever been knocked out in boxing? No. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sparring, nothing. Great. What age did you start boxing? Well, inside the gym, when I got to the gym, it was like seven and a half, eight. Whoa. But like one of my best knockouts, I think a week later, like Jake called my dad. You know, just, what? Yeah. yeah. How do you like, get your dad's number? <laughs> I don't know. I swear. I know. I swear. <laughs> All right, Sean Kelly here. Welcome back to the Digital Social Hour. I'm here with Ashton Silve and my co-host Charlie Cavalier. How so we doing, thank guys? Thank you for having me. Good. Absolutely, good. man. How's uh, everything going with boxing? Pretty good. Um, I mean, my career is on a great track, so I'm happy where I'm at. Right yeah, now. you're undefeated, right? Yeah, nine KOs. Jeez, nine, nine KOs. I saw that. Man, so uh, what's the next fight? Um, we honestly work on that. Uh, that right now um, okay. we have a, a few options i feel like it's, it's very exciting um i don't know if i could really speak on it but yeah but i just know it's gonna be something exciting for you know Man. people to watch yeah i'm pumped for the ryan garcia fight coming up yeah that's dope who you got yeah. winning that one uh, i tell people it's like a 50 50 fight okay um I just feel like Ryan has, like, you know, different abilities that um, puts him, you know, a one step closer to, you know, um, being victorious at night. Right. Um, you know, of course, he has his speed. You know, he got his height. Um, I mean, Tank, you know, he dealt with, like, fighters like that. But I just feel like Ryan's being in that position and he knows how to, you know, use his ability. And, and he's, you know, comfortable with his style. So yeah. that's the most important part, you know, comfortable with your style and been in that experience before. Mm. I feel like Tank is definitely favored. Like, I see a lot of people they, saying Yeah, he's, he's definitely favored. Yeah. Um, I mean, you expect Tank to win. Like, you know, that's yeah. um, that is just kind of, you know, something that you just expect. Like, you know, you see Tank knocking everybody out. Yeah, um, absolutely. Ryan, um, he hasn't faced, you know, too too many, you know, people. But, mm -hmm. um, but you can still see there that there's um, – There's talent there. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely talent. There's, He's fast, There's man. ways of him beating Tank. I'm putting my money on Ryan. You think so? I'm going to make a bet. I'm going to make a bet. So, a lot of professional athletes are not allowed to bet on their own sport. Are boxers allowed? Like, can you go bet on a boxing match if you want to? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I don't think so. I think I think I heard something about Floyd doing that or yeah. something. Because he's got too much inside info on boxing. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. He's got the inside <laughs> info. <laughs> Have you ever been an underdog in a fight you're going into? Um, I, I mean, yeah, quite a bit. Like, I feel like each one of my fights – but not too much of an underdog. Like, it's like, uh, again, once again, like 50-50. Oh, or okay. actually, like, the records. Just, like, you know, make you make it seem like um, that um, that they're, you know, they're, they're the you know the top top dog in that situation. Right. But especially my last fight, he was pretty much a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, I think he had over, like, 30 fights. Damn. Um, he'd been in that stage before. I think, yeah, he fought Ryan before. Oh, yeah? Um, but, yeah, so he was, in a way, predicted to be... Uh, the top dog of the fight, Got but it. there's you know there's the other side like from well, eye to eye. You look at me, you just expect me to be. It was just a challenging fight, like a lot of people thought it right. was. Right. Yeah. Because he had a lot of experience. Yeah, definitely. He probably had good stamina. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Um. Obviously, boxing is a very physical sport. How much of it would you say is mental? Because you're one on one with your opponent mm -hmm. in there. Is there a lot of mental games going on? I feel on? like eighty percent of it is mental. Really? That yeah. high? Wow. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you kind of look at a lot of. A lot of the best fighters, like, you know, the physical part is, like, you know, the back end of it. Like, that's just, like, the bonus part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, you look at us right now, like, Devin Haney is, like, one of the top fighters in uh, the weight class I'm in. Mm. And he, you know, doesn't really have knockout power. He's not the fastest, you know, guy. Mm. But, he, like, he just beat people every round with, you know, just his, you know, his mental part, his smarts and, like, his IQ. Right. F same with, like, Floyd. Yeah. You know, it was the same, you know, scenario. So, it's, like the the physical part was like the you know the bonus of it wow i never thought it'd be 80 percent. that's crazy that's a super high stat i mean obviously a lot of physicality I, yeah. goes into it but at a certain point when it's just you and them in the ring like it's yeah. it's mental it definitely i feel like it's just with any sport too like you know basketball um kobe is not the best shooter not, you know he's not the best at everything but it's like the mental jordan same thing tom brady you know he's not the, he don't have the best physique but you know he's like the best quarterback one of the goats right so that's facts yeah, yeah tom brady's not that athletic no i mean so so when you go into a fight what is your mentality are you are you angry are you focused are you like what is is there like a rage burning inside like what is your pre-fight mental preparation look mm -hmm. like um i mean honestly my pre-fight is like really kind of taking things as 
as if I if if it was a sparring day, you know, like I don't really try to like over, overwhelm myself about it. Mm. So I'm like pretty much in the room or like you know downstairs wherever I'm at, um, probably playing the game in, inside the room, like you know chilling with my friends and stuff. Um, Cause once again, I'm kind of like you know real young, like just turned 19, so I still kind of like wow. I don't know if you if I really have a child mentality, but like at the same time I do, so I don't want to like you know grow myself up too much. Even yeah. though I'm in like you know a grown man, adult you know, uh, profession, but so I go about it. But other than that, like, when I'm in the ring or, like, I try to look for little things that, like, you know, give me a little anger, like, bring the other side out of me. So, like, yeah. it's really like the face-off. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like, of course you have to do the, I mean, you don't have to do the face-off, but, like, when we're facing off, like, I just always, like, think, like, why is he, like, looking at me that long? Right, like, right. you know, like, stuff like that. Like, you know, like, I just try to take little things and just, like, you know, turn it into something that, you know, will get me to that, that side. You know, it's funny about the face-off thing. I was with Tony Ferguson, and he was telling me how much of a mental game that is. And I never yeah. really thought about it like that. Yeah, but you, you, you could definitely see it in someone's eyes. Yeah, like, you could get in people's head during the face-off, for sure. Like, McGregor does it. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, different people have, like, their little tactics. Yeah. You know. Like, he got in all those heads so bad, yeah. dude. Like Some people even, like, uh, like try to, like... Um, like give give it to you in a positive like they try to like you know soften you up a bit like you know try to smile at you and right. like you know be sweet to you so like you know you don't want to like <laughs> yeah. you know hit them too hard connor tried doing that against that one guy recently uh i forget his name um he so, lost he lost to him but. so what is your strategy when going into a face-off are you there to like make a friend are you there <laughs> no, to, like, no, i'm not are you no, softening no, him up or are you no, like no, staring no. him down like, i'm what's, just staring what's, down you're staring yeah, down yeah, silence not, dead face yeah, yeah i don't have nothing to say I okay just, yeah you like, don't talk Nah, I just you know just look at him. Let your but, boxing talk. Yeah, yourself. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if it comes to like 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 say like over internet, like I'll probably talk a little bit. But I'm yeah. just not really like you a gotta talk sell, like that. Yeah, like you gotta sell the fight sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like when you have to sell the fight, of yeah. course. Yeah. Like but other than that, like my personality is not really like just talking like you know yeah. talking mess. You're down to business. Yeah. How did you get in touch with Jake Paul and what made you sign to him? Um, so I was supposed to fight under his undercard like when I was like 17. Mm-hmm. And I was under the Willie fight, and they were trying to pin. I mean, they were trying to decide whether if they wanted to fight in Ohio or like Texas. Mm-hmm. And like Texas, when I was at 17, I was able to fight. You know, right there, like you can't fight in the U.S. Um, under 18, but certain states will let you. But so they end up making it into um, Ohio. So I was able to fight. But later on down the line, um, I had a fight coming up. My actually my first pro debut in the U.S. Um, I fought in Pomona, California. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the managers, or the co-founder, uh, Nikisa, if you know, Nikisa came and, um, you know, he, he watched me, uh, watch my fight. Um, it was a spec- It was like one of my best knockouts, honestly. Nice. And um, I think a week later, like, they, Jake called my dad. You know, just, what? Yeah. yeah How did like, you get your dad's number? <laughs> I don't know. I still, I, knew, I still haven't asked my dad about it, but he called my dad. I guess uh, my dad was telling me a story. Like, he called him, like, you know, yo, it's Jake. And I was like, who's Jake? <laughs> like, you know, like, like, stop, like, kind of stop playing on my phone. Like, you know, he's about to hang up. He's like, no, it's Jake, like Jake Paul. He, yeah. And so it just went about that. I guess he's saying like he like my skill sets. You see big thing. Like he he feels like there's a there will be a great connection and bond with us. And um, I think like two weeks later, you know, I, I went to Puerto Rico to actually meet him. But mm. first, I, we got on a call all together. Mm. You know, it was pretty um, cool right there. Then I went to Puerto Rico, and you know, just hung out with like the whole team. And it was pretty dope. It was like yeah. a few familiar faces nice. um, there, so it was even better. Yeah. And yeah, that's just how I went. That's then dope. came back. Yep. It's great to see what he's doing with the sport. Yeah, definitely. Really putting it on. It's definitely making a comeback for boxing, right? Because I feel like there was a moment there where UFC was kind of like tilting yeah. in favor of grabbing all yeah. the mainstream attention. Yeah. And I feel like Jake and Logan have really brought a lot of mm-hmm. attention back to boxing. Yeah, definitely. How yeah. has that helped you, right? Because it's bringing a lot more mainstream media attention to what's going on. Is it growing it for you also? Yeah, d- definitely. Like, and it's also. Um, like, we have a lot of influencer fighters come to the gym now. You know, it's just a lot of attention more so on me in the gym. And, you know, everybody else is coming up. Um, it's a, and not a lot of people want to get into boxing, want to know more about it. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, you know, helping out for, like, the whole boxing community out. That's dope. What uh, type of diet are you on? Is there mm-hmm. anything specific you eat? or um, I have a, Honestly, I have a nutritionist. So, mm-hmm. like, I kind of just... Kind of, I, I'm learning a bit, but mm. I'm just kind of like, you know, just following his footsteps. And, you know, he's just telling me on the way, like, what 
like you know my body uh doesn't digest this you know right. this is good for this time okay so it depends on my weight um and how we go about things so but i still try to like you know eat a good portion each day so like you know i'm not too dehydrated like when it comes to that point right or um so i keep my you know my my strength and muscles and everything else with it yeah so um Honestly, I have a diet where I'm like almost like losing a pound a day, a pound or two. What? Yeah. Dang. Bro. I mean, to y'all, it's pretty crazy, but it's not like, you know, That's we normal kinda, for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, like an That's unhealthy kind of fire, we kind of like lose like five a day. Like, we're trying to get there. Holy. Like, so, what do you walk around at? Um, I'll say like 55. Okay. 155? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And fight like 135, 130. I try, to, I try to stay around like 45. Like, so, you yeah. lose 10, 20 pounds before you have to fight? Yeah. Wow, I try not to. Like, that's the that's the thing about it. But I feel like, like naturally, I was supposed to be like pretty big. So okay, yeah. So wow. it's kind of hard to like sustain that that yeah. weight. Have you ever gone to weigh in and you were over, so you couldn't fight? No, no. Yeah, yeah. I always I always made weight. Yeah, I feel that. What's the worst weight cutting experience you've had? Um, uh, honestly, there was two. So it wasn't bad. Like, cause I'm like you know, like kind of comes with the job. Like mm-hmm. you know. Slide and take in, the, in a bad way, but it just gets to the point where, where you like you, usually like so when you first start off like you kind of like fatter a bit, so like you go for one run, you lose about like four pounds, three pounds, and you like you know you think that's gonna be a consistent rate, mm-hmm. but when you get closer to that weight, like it's kind of hard. It's so harder, you, yeah. So you run like, all right, whatever you do for a long time, you only lose like half a pound or a pound, you know, mm-hmm. and that's like mentally like you know. I feel that. Yeah. But this this last camp, I kind of tried like an MMA style, like you know how they do like mm-hmm. the, um, like a few pounds, um, the last few days and stuff like that, and a certain technique where you don't dehydrate yourself. Yeah. So I tried that. It wasn't it wasn't bad, but it was like 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 it was like yeah, weak. it was like damn, yeah. like you know you just I feel that you was kind of already for it to be over with. Do you do a lot of sauna? Um, kind of in the beginning, okay. I feel like the sauna kind of like dehydrates you a lot, sure, you know, because yeah. I just yeah, like well, you know, water, yeah. So I try to stay away from that, but it's still good at the same time because yeah. the sauna we got is the, we have like the infrared, infrared, sauna. yeah. yeah so that's pretty, I love yeah. infrared saunas, bro. Have you been? In I one? haven't done an infrared. I mean, what? I do the normal sauna almost every day, but I haven't done the infrared one yet, dude. Yeah, it's pretty, I need infrared, to get on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Infrared's good for your health. Yeah. Overall, I need more of that. My, I need yeah. more good good for my health <laughs> in my life. So yeah, that'd be awesome. Who's your like top boxers to watch? Like, who's your favorite? Um, I grew up like watching Floyd. Floyd. So I was always say Floyd. Um, Have you met him yet? Yeah, That's yeah. Dope. Like my first month into boxing. Him and Jake got beef though. So <laughs> whose side are you on there? You know, I, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> on Jake's. You know, That's <laughs> definitely. Um, I mean, but well, Floyd, he, he's hella cool. Yeah. Like when I was younger, um, like the, my first month in, into boxing. Um, him and his team like recognized me so like oh dope yeah so i ended up um going out there for when his camp but just watching him train a few times i've been nice. out there a lot honestly Sick. when i was younger so it was pretty dope to you know just be around the environment see how like you know the professional side when i was younger. yeah he's yeah. the master of his craft man. yeah it's crazy so if you could change weight classes for a day for, and uh, fight anyone else in the world who would it be mm. uh it can't be your weight class yeah no no nah. I wouldn't say, I mean, my weight class is, you know, I feel like it's the best weight class. Honestly, like, you know, all the names and the big names, but if I was to change the weight class, uh, honestly, I mean, I would say Cano, like, like you know, like, wherever weight he's at, because, you know, he's pretty a top dog, but someone, someone already beat him, of course, or two, but I feel like he's still like that, that guy, like the sport still, mm-hmm. so I feel like, like, wherever weight class, I think it's like 160 something, but I feel okay. like that, that would be... And he's like pretty much my height, so I feel mm-hmm. like it would be like a evenly match, like you know, yeah. like my height. He's not my size, of course, he's bigger, but you know. Yeah. What age did you start boxing? Like, um, well, inside the gym when I got to the gym it was like seven and a half, eight. Whoa. But That's my dad early. had me like boxing at the house, like three, three Damn. years old. Yeah. Was your dad a boxer? No. Nah. Oh, he just wanted yeah. you to be a boxer. Yeah, it was something that I, he always wanted to wanted to do, but. Wow. Uh, my grandma would have let him. So, oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I feel like, in a way, I started to a uh, little bit live his dream a bit. But then, like you know, I had talent in sports, so it was kind of like my dream started to you know come to that. Mm. Would you ever go to, to like the UFC? Uh, honestly, I I, I I think about it sometimes. Cause, you know, a lot of UFC comes over you know to boxing, so right. think about it a bit. But I don't know. It's just like I'm not I'm not good with blood. Like I don't even like. 
my opponent to have blood like oh, that. Yeah. Like once I start, once they start bleeding, like it's like throws you off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, it's kind of like time to knock them out because like, I don't <laughs> like blood, nothing to sweat, nothing to get on me. So, oh man, yeah. I feel that. Have you ever been knocked out in boxing? No. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sparring, nothing. Nope. Not even yeah. in sparring. I like that's yeah, awesome. Pretty... Knocked down. Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not hurt though. Why? It's like just you tripped up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I try to like uh switch my stance so like yeah, yeah. as halfway going through I got knocked down. Yeah. What's your style? Um, I always tell people I'm like a mobile brawler. Mobile like, so, brawler. Yeah. I'm not like you know too much of moving around like around the ring, but like. Okay. I'm like right there when I'm throwing punches, but like I'm like in the in the pocket of it. So right, yeah. Wow. And then I switch stance too, so that's another like. Okay, so you could do multiple stances yeah, that yeah. throws people off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like if you only have one stance, you'll eventually be predictable. Right. Yeah, definitely. Know? Yeah. For sure. So a lot of people nowadays like to say stupid shit, especially in public. Uh-huh. As you, as a professional fighter, have you ever had to just like rein yourself in from let's be honest, knocking someone out? From saying something stupid in the bar, in the club, <laughs> in the grocery store, whatever. I'm trying to think. Honestly, honestly, no. And people always He's ask 19. me questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. I can't really you know. get in the clubs. But, oh, yeah. Uh, I can't get in the clubs. Yeah. Yeah. But um, honestly, like, I never even had problems with it growing up either. Like, I feel like, like, you know, some people like to test, like, other people out just to see, like, you know, if it's actually true. Yeah. yeah. But I always had, like, like. You know, people that actually vouch for like they saw, like they saw what I did in the ring. They saw right. like at a young age. So I don't know what it is. Maybe like I have like good energy, so it's probably not that. Yeah, people really test McGregor, but yeah. yeah, he's like asking for it. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like his probably his energy is with. Yeah, like you know? he's drunk and he's doing. And whatever. you do have amazing energy. Like you're you're on. T- you're, like, you're absolutely right. Thank like you, you give up nice vibes. Like you're a nice person. You're not like you don't seem like no, you're like looking for a fight, sure. right? No, no, <laughs> no. Except no, in the no, ring. No, yeah. 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 Do would you say pro boxers make more money than UFC fighters? Definitely, definitely. I feel like, but not in the beginning though. Like okay. beginning stage of it, nah. I feel like you know UFC just get like a good amount of check for like their first few fights. Right. But you know, in the long run, definitely. Yeah. Really, I thought yeah. it was the other way around. Nah, because like, John Jones kinda, just made a bag, right? Yeah, and that's I feel like Ryan Ryan's kind of making that money without having a belt, you know. But is that because of his social media? Yeah, following? that too. Okay. But even like, you know, I mean, UFC markets are. I feel like they market their fighter a lot better. Like you know, just a lot of UFC fighters and right. like boxers. So. Yeah, I like the UFC press conference more than boxing. Yeah. Because I was watching Ryan's and it wasn't like that entertaining. Yeah, compared yeah. To it's like like, like you want to see a little bit more. Or yeah. You just want to see like you know they have like other people talking for them a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like yeah. How much of that beef? is manufactured versus real at the face-offs right i mean you're trying to sell the pay-per-view you're trying to raise awareness for the fight yeah. all that stuff I, I feel like i feel like all of his well majority of it is real like really yeah like wow. i feel like i feel like a lot of it's real like you honestly like like kind of mean with the stuff that you say in the beginning until like after the fight like i feel like a lot of people earn someone else's respect afterwards who kind of like you know the beef just kind of just goes away for some reason. You just earn your respect. So. Yeah, yeah. But like once a lot you of that fight right someone, there, there's yeah, respect. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Once you kind of get over with, that's what it is. Like yeah. Once you get over with, then it's all right. Like you know. If you win a fight, do you get more money than the loser? Uh, if that's in the contract. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but majority of times, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of politics that goes into it, right? Like you got to get your fight. You got to have the right promoter. You got to do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Is it ever frustrating for you? Where you might feel like you're good enough or you're ready to do whatever, but the politics of the sport are holding you back. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, honestly, that, that's kind of how it is with boxing. And that's um, what I think Jake intentionally was to do when mm-hmm. he entered the sport. So um, that's, and that's uh, a lot of boxers starting to, you know, get that awareness of it. So a lot of people are trying to, like, you know, um, you know, fix fix that part of boxing. I mean, it's something like, you know, like the, the Creed, you saw the last uh, yep. Creed, it's kind of like that, like it's kind of, that's kind of how boxing is a bit. You know, so Creed like, was pretty accurate Yeah, pretty much, okay. yeah, with like the, just the politics of all of it, like, you Interesting. know, it's really like, like no way, like someone could just kind of come in and just go straight to a fight like that, like, you know, it's really like people take their steps, but some people feel like they should, they should have earned that spot. Wow. But it's just like the politics yeah. behind it. It's kind of like NASCAR you're telling me about, right? Yeah, like if you don't have the right last name in racing, like you're not going to get to the top. <laughs> That's right. crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed with boxing, they like to build up the fighters. Yeah. So yeah. they'll put them against easier opponents yeah, yeah, for a while. Yeah, yeah. Like the UFC, like 
records that like make someone look like amazing yeah and then get in the ring it's like they you know, yeah <laughs> like it's like a whole different like you like like what i buy this for type of thing yeah. so yeah so some of them i mean I, I feel like that's like it's a good and a bad thing towards it like you know yeah. like, i feel like you can't always make someone like look good like you know like yeah, yeah. you know it's just like because when it gets to that point like you know you're just kind of robbing people for their money yeah you there's know? no point at that yeah. point yeah I uh I went to the first two Tyson Fury versus uh, Wilder fights. And yeah. It's the only time I've ever been outnumbered by British people on American soil. I, I've been to uh, one of them. Uh, <laughs> why is it? Why is it so much bigger in other countries than I, the states? I went out there for um, when I was in the amateurs. I think I was like thirteen, and mm. it was big. Like yeah. I had like honestly a huge crowd. That I didn't know like, in the, the other side. Yeah, like nice. boxing wise, it was like pretty big. Is um, it the biggest country UK for boxing? possibly it's like it's kind of crazy out there like they like you know they're diehard fans for like wow. boxing and like they're interesting they're people yeah like you see they'll travel like they would travel their ways to come and watch their fire fight we, we wouldn't go that way you know no yeah. the stadiums they fill the numbers they the tickets they sell in the uk for fights is insane it's crazy right really? like they barely can sell you know twenty thousand for crypto.com center or i forget the place where i saw the fight in vegas for wilder fury but like they're selling a hundred thousand tickets for a fight in the uk wow. do you think we'll ever get to that level in the states or has ufc messed that up mm. um maybe i feel like We'll see, like I think after the Ryan and a, a tank, mm -hmm. like, we'll see how that kind of goes. Like if people start fighting each other and stuff like that. Right. I just feel like everybody just know like on the U.S. side, like they just know what their money is kind of worth. Like they're like, is this really gonna be a good yeah. fight? Is this mm -hmm. what we really want to see? Like I was wondering you know? why Jake picked Tommy, but now that I hear this British market's huge, that makes sense yeah, financially. It's, yeah, it's crazy. What yeah. did you think of that fight? Especially like just the U.S. and U.K. is always like a, a big rivalry. Thing. Yeah. yeah, but that fight, um, I always feels like a pretty accurate accurate thing i'm like the the most it could could have done was a draw okay but um i wasn't there to see like jake's camp or anything like that you know even though he said like his excuses why but you know that's still like never reason i i fought in the uk honestly with a flu oh yeah yeah and i performed pretty well <laughs> yeah damn yeah so um i mean of course you like you don't want to like always you know come with excuses and stuff like there's always like a like if it's really that bad, like it's a, it's to a point where you can kind of pull out the fight, and right. like you know, I feel like everybody would know the reasons and stuff like that, and you could postpone it. Honestly. Yeah, honestly, but if you kind of accepted the fight, you in the ring, like you know, yeah, it's should, almost you know? better not to if you lose, just not yeah. to say. Anything yeah, because you accepted cause... the fight, you went inside the fight with, you know, whatever yeah. you accepted. So yeah, you just gotta accept the loss, whatever comes with it. I feel that. Walk me through the process when you sign a contract and you know you're going to fight. How long do you have to train and then how many hours a day are you training? Um, honestly, like, because okay, it's, it's like different, different, um, different ways. So when I was uh, first signing a box, um, I wanted to like kind of build up or kind of like speed up my, my career a bit. So mm -hmm. I was fighting like every other month. Okay. So, and then, but we went down to Mexico. So it's kind of like Mexico. Yeah. So you have to pay, you have, well, we came out of our pockets to like kind of pay for fights. So like, oh, you know, wow. yeah. So we kind of came out of our pockets to pay to get fights and stuff like that. So, okay. um, so yeah, I think that we did that for like five fights and, but we did, honestly, we didn't have a promoter too. That it was our own, like, you know, promotion company. Okay. Um, and we went down there and we did that. So that kind of like, you know, was kind of like put me up more in the rankings, you could say, to, you know, fight for, you know, a prospect spot, yeah. like get, you know, prospect contender champion. So doing that. But as of right now, like I kind of, a lot of majority of people want to wait um, or have like the time of fighting to training camp is like six weeks. Six weeks. You want about like six, eight weeks. Got it. Some people do like four. Um, Four weeks, yeah, and then you're training seven days a week, or you take a day off. Um, I, me personally, I five to six days. Five to six days. Yeah, yeah. Wow, how many hours a day? I'd say like three to five, but like Damn. broken up a bit. Yeah, that's intense. Yeah, and the other hours are basically you just resting to get back in the gym for yeah. the most part. Like you're, it's not like you're out messing around on those no, non hours. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. For me personally, like I'm just like resting back. Um, just enjoying my time, like, you know, off a little bit. Like, it, it'll probably be, like, two weeks, maybe three. Mm. Enjoying my time off, um, just back with, like, family and stuff. I mean, I usually always have family with me, but, um, like, you know, more I'm just, like, sitting back, you know, just enjoying the time with my family more than, yeah. you know, just in the gym consistently, like, you know, every day, all day. You ever get insane anxiety before a fight? 
No, honest, no. Really? No, yeah, that's never kind of been like you don't get my anxious case. at all. No, like when I was young, my first amateur fight, I honestly went in the pool swimming before. <laughs> like, yeah, like I didn't know, you know, no better, but I kind of just went in the pool. Like it was in Vegas, so I went in the pool swimming. Like, wow. Like, yeah, my that's thing crazy. is always just like not trying to overwhelm yourself, not overthink it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like the anxiety comes from overthinking. Yeah, yeah and that's sure. yeah, just your performance to look totally different from a training camp, you know. I agree because when we do pu- we do a lot of public speaking and like if I overthink it I'll, I'll have a little bit of anxiety yeah. but if I just go to it and show up and talk and just yeah. be normal like it's, I don't get anything and yeah. it, and that's honestly when it comes off the best also yeah, right? like, yeah definitely yeah you know, it just we, flows you know we spoke about uh, you know cryptocurrency at this panel yesterday uh-huh. and I don't think either one of us really prepped but then mm-hmm. the panel went amazing and it's just like oh that's just what we do all day anyways yeah, yeah. what is the worst part about being a professional boxer. Mm. Um, I feel like the worst part is uh, probably the cutting the weight. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. Ten pounds. Uh, yeah, all. that's yeah. Like, that's probably the worst part. Like you just. So you fast a lot. A bit. Well, I try not to, but like the method I kind of grew up was like that. That was my thing. Like yeah, you know, just fasting a little bit, but not too much. Where I'm like dehydrated for right, they right. you got a whole camp going through. But you probably just a little bit take a few meals off yeah. or like cut the portions down yeah i feel that i did a 24-hour fast and then i had a basketball game that night dude i felt weak really yeah. like super yeah. weak. so i know what you mean yeah. for sure how many calories a day are you eating do you know um well in the beginning of like camp like they try to get to like three thousand. okay yeah and we just start cutting kind of depending on my weight interesting yeah. so who is the greatest boxer of all time oh I, I, I gotta say floyd, floyd honestly yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I just he hasn't I mean, lost yeah he hasn't lost uh, kind of broke records you yep. know Kind of fought. He fought a lot of top people. Yeah. But I think he fought the most. He beat uh, Canelo, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tyson or Ali, who wins in a fight? Ooh. Mm, um. Damn. I honestly, it depends. What like <laughs> what in their prime primes, prime eras? Prime. Yeah, prime versus prime. I would probably say Tyson. Tyson. I'll take like Tyson. No one's beating him. I take prime. Tyson. That yeah. dude was scary, man. Yeah. Yeah. Even just watching the videos, I was scared of watching the videos. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. It's scary. <laughs> yeah. His yeah, old different. videos, man. Do you know what your like body fat percent is? No, but last time I checked, it was like eight to ten. Eight to ten. Yeah, that's pretty lean. Yeah, yeah, that's very lean. I wonder yeah. what most boxers are. They're probably under ten. Yeah, when you when you at like that weight, if you're finding like a your tip top shape, you probably be like five. Yeah. Like you know, it is it it gets kind of crazy. Mm. Yeah. So what is when you're not fighting, when you're not in training camp, but you're trying to stay obviously ready? Mm-hmm. What is that? What does your day to day routine look like? Are you you're playing the game a little bit, maybe right? Mm-hmm. You're relaxing mm-hmm. with your boys, uh-huh. but you're going to the gym what five days a week? You're still kind of making sure your food intake yeah, is okay. Yeah, yeah, I try to still. I, I, but me, I still kind of just eat stuff that I'm a little bit that like I'm craving. Like I've been craving like the whole camp and stuff, <laughs> so I try to get a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. So but yeah, I give myself like a few days. Like all right, like I'll give myself five or like seven days and you know i kind of get back mm. where i feel like um for me it's like running is my best thing so like right. if i go for like a jog like every day i pretty much be around the same way i wouldn't blow up so high like you know yeah are you good at any other sports basketball football oh yeah, yeah. we gotta run some basketball yeah. then i'm with it, I'm with <laughs> it. let's go I mean, that's, that's like that's always been my like number one sport oh so. hell yeah I yeah. love well, basketball. I think boxing is your number one sport. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, yeah, that I'm best at. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I grew up just always wanting to be a basketball player. Like, that yeah. was just something. Basketball, you need height. Nah. You don't think so? Nah. I mean, it's easier, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, nah, I'm like I'm like a Patrick Beverly and, like, okay. Isaiah Thomas, Nate right. Robinson, and everything like that. Yeah, so there's certain guys that can make it work. I mean, as the least athletic guy at the table, I would take a few extra inches of height. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you're like kind of not really athletic, I feel like. But once again, I feel like your IQs and you know your mental game is really what kills it. Yep. You know, Pat Bev averaged 40 a game in high school. Dude, I heard that. I heard. Saw, I saw there was a Paul George podcast where they were talking about yeah. that. And I mean, it, it's crazy. He's not a scorer. No. no, he's definitely not. Yeah. Did you play in high school or junior high or anything like no, that? No, I played uh, a bit in junior high and mid- middle. I mean, elementary, but. Um, I was always like more and more I got older like the more I got busy with boxing like traveling and stuff so yeah. like I was just wasn't never there but I played football though like you know my what family and position? stuff uh, running back oh running back running back yeah nice. um, when I was younger it was quite, I used to play both sides of cornerback too but nice. like, again like you know boxing kind of was, always took over but um, those stiff arms came with a little extra punch did, behind yeah, them oh yeah yeah yeah, I yeah, yeah yeah I put people down a few with that <laughs> 
All right, my man. We got to wrap this up. Any right, closing sure. comments or where people nah, can find just you? Thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, follow me on IG or everywhere at Ashton Silva H2O. Sick. You heard it here, guys. Digital Social Hour. See you next week.